in this problem, we are to find the centroid and area moments of inertia, then afterwards, the radius of gyration. This is the T-beam and this is just a flipped T-beam. We are considering a cross-section of this T-beam, which is this. This is the reference point for all your calculations. Step number one, split the T-beam into two rectangular parts like this. This part will be one and this will be two. Step number two, write out the formula of the centroid of the T-beam along the Y axis, usually written as Y bar. This is the centroid of both rectangles that formed the T-beam. This is the area of the first rectangle. This is the centroid of the first rectangle only. This is the area of the second rectangle. This is the centroid of the second rectangle only, considering the y axis. And this is the sum of the both rectangles that makes up the T-beam. Step number three. Find the area of the first and the second rectangle. The area of a rectangle is usually calculated as the length times the breadth. Hence, we use this formula to calculate the two portions of the rectangle. The area of the first part is 4000 mm square and the area of the second part is 6000 mm square. Step number four, find the centroid of each part of the rectangle. Considering the reference point, if you split this first rectangle into two parts and consider the distance to the reference point, that becomes the centroid of the first rectangle. Subsequently, if you split the second rectangle into two parts, and consider the distance to the reference point becomes the centroid of the second rectangle. For the first rectangle, the centroid total is considering the reference point. From this point to this point is 150 and from this point to this point is 20 because it's 40 split into two and the total is 170. Then for the centroid of the second rectangle, we split this into two, which is 150 divided by two, which is 75. Now we have our A1 and A2. Also, we got our Y1 bar and Y2 bar for the centroids. We can now substitute into this formula to obtain the centroid of the T-beam, which is also called the neutral axis. If you substitute and solve carefully, this is the centroid of the T-beam. From this reference point to this point is 150. That means 113 should be somewhere here as the centroid of the beam. Next in the question, let's find the area moment of inertia. To find the area moment of inertia, step number one, write out the formula for area moment of inertia along the x axis using the parallel axis theorem, which is this. Where d is the distance from the total centroid to the centroid of each rectangle. That is, if this is the centroid of the first rectangle and this is the centroid of the second rectangle and this is the centroid of both rectangles. Hence, the distance we have here is this is D1 
and this is D2. This is the area moment of inertia for the first rectangle and this is the area moment of inertia for the second rectangle. Hence, I'm going to sum the both of them to get the area moment of inertia. If I substitute into this formula and solve carefully, I'm going to get this. Also, if I substitute into this formula and solve carefully for the second rectangle, I'm going to get this. When you substitute for the first rectangle, beware of the base to make sure the length corresponds to this and also that the height corresponds to this. The height is also cube. And for the second rectangle, make sure the base corresponds to this and the height also corresponds to this. Also, it is cube. Similarly, the general centroid will always subtract the centroid of each rectangle. It doesn't matter which one is bigger. The square will always take care of the negative. Now that we have obtained the area moment of inertia for the first rectangle and the area moment of inertia for the second rectangle in this and this, next is we are going to sum both results to obtain the area moment of inertia for both rectangles. When you sum this and this together, we finally obtain this as the area moment of inertia. To complete the questions, we are going to find the radius of gyration. The radius of gyration can be represented as this or like this. And the formula is the sum of the total area moment of inertia divided by the sum of the total area of the T-beam. Next, substitute. Substituting and solving carefully, we have this is our final result. In the next video, we are going to use a given area moment of inertia to find the thickness of a beam. And thereafter, calculate the area moment of inertia and the radius of gyration. I hope the steps used in this video was helpful. I will see you in the next video.